Hello, welcome to our channel. So we, as if you have been watching our videos, you know that we recently had a baby. And the day after I had the baby, I got a call from um, a family member. And she said, I'm gonna need for you to name your next child John or um, or Tiffany <laughs> she said because you are doing the most with your kids names and I need you to change that it's too much <laughs> to which I replied no 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 <laughs> We'll keep having fun with our kids names so we're gonna talk in this video about why we chose our children's names why we view um, the choosing of our children's names almost as an art form and a little bit more about names and what we think about them so this was a suggestion by one of our subscribers yeah Shelby yeah. thank you Shelby Shelby's and, the best. Uh, uh, we invite Shelby and all of you to subscribe, to yes. like the video, and to share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're so grateful for you that have subscribed so far. We know that you guys are, you're the true, you're the true fans. We don't know where this uh, channel is going to take us, but we know you're the true fans and we hope you stick around. Yeah. And uh, before we start, we just wanted to let you know that if you're new to this video, we're all about natural living. That's what Verastruck means. And uh, that means... It can mean a lot of things. It means a lot of things, yeah. but I think there is, I think there is a nice, um, there's a nice uh, singularity to it. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully you'll hear about it in every video and... Um, that'll be kind of a through line for people yeah yeah and I feel like there's a lot of anyway misconceptions about what natural living actually means so That's this true. should be interesting well so in the case of names right right you and I have been interested in having names that to some degree reference the natural world yeah yeah the natural world and yeah I mean, that's just the best way to put it, I suppose, because one could argue that the word era has nothing to do with the mm -hmm. natural world, but it does. Well, it it's, does. It's a point in time. Yeah, but um, so era is the name of our first child. And, um, you know, we were, we were willing to be inspired yeah. by things that we hear and we're not uh, completely making these making these names out of nothing. <laughs> no. And I think that's important because it's easy to go down that road of, I'm just going to make it up. Yeah. And I think in the end, what you and I, so we had a discussion before we got married. We had, and it was probably, probably our first fight, actually. It was actually after we got married on the way back from our honeymoon. Oh, there you go. That was so awkward. We got in an argument over baby names. Because <laughs> here's the fact of the matter. <laughs> I know what my name means. Right. So I'm Micah. Those of you who don't know me, hi. My name's <laughs> Micah. My name means who is like unto Jehovah. So it's a Hebrew name. It's a very sweet name. It's supposed to reference, you know, the religion. Mm -hmm. Right? And Jehovah, for those who don't know, is, is, is a is God so um, so it's like who's like unto God I'm basically always asking people <laughs> <laughs> you're just human you know remember that anyway but whenever someone says my name I'm not thinking every single time who is like unto Jehovah who is like unto Jehovah I'm not thinking I that. think about that maybe once a year when we're talking about the meaning of your name exactly <laughs> And I think that's really hard for parents to accept. And even other people. They're going to be like, oh, you, you know, you name your child something. Oh, they're going to be made fun of for that. It's like they might get made fun of for that. They might. It's for not a, a second. It's not a 100% guarantee. And 
And if they do, it'll be probably one one kid. Who's going to make fun of them anyway for something. For something. Uh, exa- <laughs> that's an even better point. Is it probably make fun of them for something regardless? Mm-hmm. That's a good point. But it's like, how? I, I ask you, how often are you thinking about what your name means? Or what other people's names mean. Or what other people's names. I guarantee, because Michael's a more common name, but that literally just means who is like unto Elohim. Elohim mm-hmm. is also God. But um, it's how often are you thinking when you hear, oh, this is Michael Higginbottom. You're going, oh, Michael. Who is like unto Elohim? Higginbottom. Something, 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 bottom. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not thinking the meaning no, you're of not. the words. I don't even know what my name means, and I don't really care. So I, I really think, don't. so the fight that we basically had, it wasn't, it was, it was a disagreement. It's a disagreement. It was an yeah, emotional we were, disagreement. We were just throwing punches on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but the idea basically was, as I was saying, in the end, it's about semiotics. Yeah. So what are semiotics? Semiotics is the study of, of language and the fact that language are just signs of reality. They're not, they don't actually depict reality themselves. It's just right. like a key word. I say chair, what kind of chair are you thinking about? It's different from the chair I'm thinking about, which is different from the chair you're thinking about mm-hmm. when you say chair. Therefore... The word chair is just a sign referencing a vague thing. It's not actually the thing itself. So the example that you came up with on the, um, when you're having the disagreement that made me feel triggered or upset is you're like, you said, we could name our child trash and it ultimately wouldn't matter. And you said, it's an extreme example. You said, but I would be willing to name our child trash because I know that that it would just the meaning would not matter at, to a certain point. Yeah, almost immediately. Yeah, almost immediately, and that's hard for you, you know, people to grasp. Oh I'm yeah, sure, so I'm sure you're having a hard time right now thinking, oh like, how dare, don't... how dare you think of naming a child trash? That's what I was thinking. I was yeah, <laughs> I was very emotional. The reason it. why I thought it was a great example, I still think it is. Is because first of all, I like I like the sound of it. Trash. I like the sound of it. Kind of it like flows. Kind of like thrash. Yeah, kind of like thrash. From Hunger Games. Sure. Is that his name? I think it's Thresh. Thresh, but it has a similar yeah, sound. Yeah. It, anyway, it, it, it's zippy. And it sounds cool. And at some point, you forget that it's related. Yeah. If it's your name, you forget that it's related to something else. Now, there are certain words in the English language that are actually really pretty and if you like I was sorry to interrupt but I was thinking a couple months ago about the word acne and I was like oh I actually really like that word hmm. and I didn't realize that I actually really liked the word acne and I like the way it looks when it's spelled out I like the way it looks I don't love the way it sounds yeah that's maybe what I prefer more but yeah I like the way it looks and I was like oh that's really interesting because Whenever we normally hear acne, we think, blech, you know? So anyway, go on. Um, that's okay. So, so first of all, you're not thinking of the definition of your word, but you're also not thinking of any similar words either. So my name, my name is Micah. There is a mineral called Micah, and I've thought about the mineral more often than most people have, but probably only like three times more. You would think like a thousand times more because it's your name because it's my name but no probably only three times more meaning i've thought about it maybe a dozen times in my entire lifetime and i think when we named including now yeah when we yeah when we think about um like when we first named our son era I remember I started, you know, noticing the word era more in my oh, yeah. reading. It's all over the place. But then it stopped like I stopped thinking about the fact that I could was reading era like every in once fact, in a while now, I other still family, point it out. in fact other family members will sometimes point it out and I'll be like oh I didn't even notice I'm like oh yeah 
That is his name, cool. isn't it? Yeah, it is in that passage of article that we just read or in the movie we were just watching. Like, era. Yeah. It's like, anyway, it's just really interesting. Because really you, you don't think about that. They're, they're different things now. Oh, completely. The, re- era the is realities our sign, are yeah. so separate that the even though it's literally the same word, spelled the same, mm-hmm. sounds the same. Different words in your mind, they're different signs. And what's interesting though is that I think you and I can both agree that while we do have this belief about names, and I, I think it's so true, we still do put a little bit of weight in the meaning of our children's names. Well, Just a little bit. And that's what I was going to get to. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think the image of trash is so interesting because on the one hand, I don't want trash to exist anymore. I hope we get to a state in which we are anything that we might might throw away. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even call it trash anymore. It's biodegradable. So it's it's refuse. It's refuse isn't the right term. It's just stuff you put, it's compost. That's the term you would use. Is Indeed. It's, is it's compost. So trash would no longer have meaning. Right. Now, am I realistic in thinking that that's going to happen soon? Probably not. But like, that's another thing I was thinking of was, hey, that could be another reason to call him. I, I imagine it being a boy. But yeah. calling a boy trash is so you could say, <laughs> my hope is that your name is no longer a word associated with something gross with something gross and in fact the fact that you name that is proof that we've we've gotten better you know or at least that that boy might consider being someone that doesn't have trash Does that <laughs> yeah so who's who's the trash in the house there aren't two trashes there's just one but even if there were two trashes they're separate because of because they just are. Because language does that. Yeah, it oops. It splits things. Yeah, it does. So when I say there, you're thinking that there's lots of different theirs, and they have very different meanings in terms of reality. So what you and I have tried to do is that while we do think about the meaning of our children's names and choosing the names, we more associate, where we more um, put weight on the sound and Correct. the flow. Correct. And the beauty of it. Correct. And you can even get over that. Yeah. You can. Um, you have a name like Methuselah. What a name that is. Or uh, Xenophilius. Mm-hmm. You're eventually going to get over the fact that it's a complicated word to say. And people come up with nicknames anyway. Yeah. Zeno. <laughs> yeah. That sounds cool. No, it's usually Phil. No, I'm serious. How boring. I've met a xenophilius and he goes by Really? Phil. Yeah. Where was he from? He's from West Virginia. Obviously. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool word. It is a cool word. I'm not denying that. Um, so in terms of names, people are like, oh, I need to name them something. And here's the other thing is, so my name is Micah. Yes, you've made that. But I, that's a pretty unique name. It is pretty unique. Especially for the year I was born. Yes. Was, I think there was only like six, 600 Micahs in all the United States. And was it males or was it male and female? Both male and female, yeah. Wow. In fact, almost no females at that time. So if there are any Micahs born in 1991, I'm one of a few hundred. Yeah, I was born in the 1990s as well. And there are um, a few Jessicas. <laughs> the most common name <laughs> most common name in the late 1990s I wonder why 90s. I started going by Jess there you go I don't know <laughs> but like I take a lot of pride in the fact that my name is unique and that I'm, I'm one of the few Micahs especially my age mm-hmm. um, there were more started to get into the few thousands and now I think it's getting maybe even to the tens of thousands of Micahs yeah I've heard more people named. Naming their children Micah. I was going to say um, something that I remember someone brought up with me when we were trying to choose our son's name when I was pregnant last time. So they're like, oh, you just want a, them to have a unique name. So no. And I mean, I, 
I will admit that to a certain degree. That's, that's easy. I like, yeah, I, I like the idea of I'll our... I'll call him Yeeper. Y-Y-P-R. Yeeper. Yeah, it's like we, that's not the main focus. And I just wanted to say that, is that we're, we're not necessarily trying to make our kids into these unique beings because they're inherently unique and that's they why are. they deserve a unique that's name that's why they deserve a unique <laughs> name you go okay they're going to be unique regardless yeah well then why are we giving them common names we should be giving them unique names that's really only about them well and it's just what i love is that as parents we get this opportunity to choose these names that our children will potentially be called by for the rest of their lives they might come up with a nickname or they might choose to change their name that's, sure, fine. that's fine but we're giving them this gift and why not make it just beautiful yeah why not make it like an artistic expression yeah, it's of our like love this is this is the best we could come up with in terms of making sure that and i guess then we're formalists we're formalists hmm. so we do care about the sound yeah. we do care a little bit about what it means and um and we and we do want it to be beautiful. Yeah. But that recognizably beautiful. And we're not we're not uh, we're not deconstructionist enough to be to call our children trash or you. No, no, we're not. To completely invent it or to use a name that has a crazy meaning. So let's get in so something that I just realized about both of our children's names all of a sudden is that both of them have something to do with genealogy. They do? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, first, let's talk about Era's name, Era Elm. So, you and I had, you know, have been discussing names. Right. And this was before we got... pregnant. This was actually before we got pregnant oh, okay. that we had this experience. Um, at church, we decided to take a genealogy class together. Yeah. Which was fun. Um, we only got to do the class for a few weeks because then we were um, called to be teachers yeah. of other classes. But That's as we were going idea. through my genealogy, we found that there is a man who is most likely a slave yeah. in the South. and Based on the time period, it's almost yes, guaranteed. Based, yeah. South Carolina, and his early name, 1800s. Everyone was like, oh, that sounds like a girl's name. It's like, no, his name was Era, and this was an enslaved man in the South. Um, it's actually cool that we had that record. I know. And I I remember seeing that name and just being so, like, just stricken with it. I was like, wow, his name is Era. That's a beautiful, meaningful name. And honestly, I forgot about it afterward. I thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until the middle of our pregnancy that it just, all of a sudden, the baby, you know, Era was moving inside of me. And I thought, oh, this is Era. Hmm. And I didn't want to push that on you or anyone else, but I was just like, I feel like I really like the name Era. Do you remember some of the other names that we were considering? Phoenix, Knox. Yeah, I don't really care about them. Yeah, Era I just thought that might be. One by far. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd let people know what else we were considering because yeah. I know Atlas. Those were the three others. And we were thinking Knox, N O X. Yeah. Meaning knight in Latin. Yeah. So a natural thing, mm -hmm. you know, Phoenix being, you know, this this fantastical image, but also just being Phoenix, it's like unique, mm -hmm. but also, also pretty easy to say. The same family member that I was talking about at the beginning of this video, she said that Fe when I was saying that we were considering the name Phoenix, she was like, well, that sounds very studious. And I was like, oh, studious. anyway. She has fun opinions about it all. Um, I love then, her child's name, and it's not its not that common. It's not a normal name. It's, it's a beautiful name. Um, so let's talk about where we got Elm. Elm was just on our list. Yeah, so it's Era Elm is his name. Yeah, Elm, I actually like Elm. That's probably my most favorite word, if I could think of a word. Uh-huh. It's like, of all the words ever... Real or not real, that's my favorite. It's elm. Wow. The way that it sounds, elm. Mm -hmm. 
But that would be so annoying if Elm ended up being a word that meant something like car or something. I'd be like, <laughs> I love this word, but why does it have to mean car? Yeah, anyway, that's funny. Wouldn't that be funny? Well, and what I, so what I love about the mixture of the two, it's like era Elm. It's like era of, it's like of natural tree. So it's talking about a tree. It's like growth. Well, it means strength. Right. Well, here's what's fun about words is I then go and I make an album for him. Right? Yes. Which you can listen to. There's yeah. some videos on our channel of the music videos for the music. So I made this album for Era Elm, our son. And, uh, and so now when I think of Era Elm, the two words together, mm -hmm. they mean something different than just Era or just Elm. And now it means this album that I made, which, well, is, so kind of, which is kind is of like a slow electronic. What's so fun is that we don't, I don't say Era's name and think, oh yeah, that album that Micah made, mm -hmm. even though it was for him, Correct. kind of. It just feels completely separate. They're completely separate. Mm -hmm. So Era is separate from both the album and from our son. Um, Elm is separate from both of them as well. Then Era Elm together sounds like the album to me. And uh, yeah, I just think that's really interesting. That is super interesting. So Exora Eve. So I just want to say with Eve, so I, I personally have a deep... Well, first let's say our second child's name is Exora Eve. I-X-O-R-A. Oh yeah, I-X-O-R-A. And then Eve as, you know, Adam and Eve. Yeah. So that's why it's um, a genealogical. She's the first mother we're related to her. There you go. Okay. So that's why I thought that was really fun. Yeah, and, and our and our belief we're, we're you know we're Christian, so we believe she's the first mother. She's the first mother. So, and and because of our denomination of Christianity, she rocks. Yeah, we there's. She's not the evil person who. Made us all fall. She's not the silly woman. Mm -mm. She's decided. the strong woman who who helped us. Who's intuitive. Exist. Yes. We exist because of her. Yeah. So because of her choices. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful to her, and she's someone I think of often as a very strong person that inspires me. So but at the same time, we've always been in. So I guess if we were to say, you know, what's our philosophy of names? It's has a nice sound, sounds a certain way, mm -hmm. looks a certain way when you write it down. You know, does it look nice when it's written down? Does it sound nice? Does it have a good meaning? Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, is there some positive inspiration involved with it? And then is it natural? Is there a natural imagery involved with it as yeah. well? And that's probably how you would describe how we came with our names yeah in uh, the case of exora that's a fun one not like crazy fun but kind of fun so jess and i when we first met we i was excited i don't know what you were but i was excited to hear your music choices because i figured oh yeah here's this being who likes music and has been away from me for so many years and has developed a certain taste of music and there's a lot of music out there I'm like, here we go. We get to swap get, the music. Yeah, that was so fun. Trade, trade the the bands, trade the albums, and she did have a rich. Jess, you did have a rich amount of albums for me to to look into. And uh, one of the ones that I showed Jess, that I showed you, was, you know, Exora by Copeland. Yes. And uh, the. The album's good. It is worth checking out. It is a good album. Am I crazy about Copeland? No. Nope. nope. <laughs> but it, we like the sound of it. It looks nice when you see it written. And, and then we saw what the meaning was. And we then looked that up we together. looked up the meaning and it had a natural meaning. It's a flowering plant. Tropical. Flowering tropical plant. Yeah. And um, she, she is the tropical baby, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Exora is the tropical baby. <laughs> we decided. And uh yeah. 
So that's how we figure that out. Sounds yeah. good. Looks good when you see it written. It has a natural meaning, positive meaning. Sounded like you said pasta meeting. Pasta meeting. <laughs> Our next child will be named Linguini. Linguini. <laughs> well, the let's let's broaden this out a little bit. Sure. As far as like the philosophy of Aristruct. Sure. I think the idea of of having a unique name is a good one. Mm-hmm. I think that is Veristruct, is to have a unique name for each of your children. But to also remember that identity is unique regardless. Yeah. Exoria might have this just beautiful poetic name and she might decide that she wants to be a director of, I don't know what to call it, of construction. There you go. Or something. Maybe she wants to, yeah, maybe she'll, she'll she wants real, to be a contractor or she'll something. She'll be real unique. And who cares? She does who ballet cares? and she's a contractor. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I I keep thinking she's going to be a dancer for some weird reason, which is the most stage mom thing that's happened to me right. so far. So I'm slowly going to let go of that, I'm sure. Not slowly. I'm working on it right now. Anyway, it's weird. I think we have a fascination with vowels, too. No, we do. I like I's and A's and E's for names. Yeah, I like all those too. It just, I don't know, just sounds yeah. nice. Yeah, it's nice. Our next, our next, um, we know what our next son's name is going to be, and mm-hmm. that's going to be an I for the first name and an E for the second, for the middle name. Yeah. But we won't tell you what it is. There you go. Oh, for four. To wait until our next child. And then we'll have, not our next child, but our next son. Yeah. And we'll have, uh, we'll let you know about that birth story too, because birth is also a, nat- a natural part of living. Yep. So that's, that's included in things that we like to talk about. So yeah, just, just to recap real quick, Veristruct, I think it is Veristruct to be thinking in terms of, of natural things. Yeah. But then again, language is man-made, so I guess if you're trying to... M- marry the mm-hmm. two, marry the natural and the man-made language, then that's fine too. Yeah. That's beautiful. I, th- I totally agree. And I just want to say, lastly, about Veristruct, that people forget as we're talking about natural things, natural living, um, what natural living really is, is not buying natural products. You no. know, it says natural on the... No on it Mm -mm. it's not about that it's about respecting what already is which involves our bodies which involves the earth involves the food that we eat it's less processing less humanism so anyway i just thought i'd explain that because i i know that when people say natural living there's just so many misconceptions about that you just start thinking of. can i buy it yeah can i buy the natural living it's like well kind of Kind of. I mean, money gets you a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> but let's just put it this way. It's more about time than about money. Yeah. It's more about time. It's more about your inner choice to do. For than sure. it is about money. Like in the case of growing a tree. Okay, you can buy a tree, but that's not, that's not as fair a struct mm-hmm. as growing the tree. For sure. All right, and that's why we, that's how we chose the names of our children. Yes. We're excited to have some more to tell you about. Yeah. I'm really excited to have some more. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, If you have any suggestions for videos, we'd love to hear suggestions. Um, You're important to us. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and in the end, our, our frame, what this channel is about is about Veristruct. And we can talk about Veristruct with a lot of things. There's a few things where it's like, Veristruct does not apply in this case. We're also trying to be more positive, you know? Yeah. Not like, oh, this is so bad. Veristruct hates this. It's like, no. Let's talk about stuff that Veristruct likes that we can all enjoy. So if our negativity in the past has been off-putting, we are working on that. There you go. So stick around. See ya.